Section 21 of Astounding Stories 05, May 1930. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Astonishing Stories 05, May 1930. The Reader's Corner, a meeting place for readers of Astounding Stories. An Astounding Career Dear Editor, A friend introduced me to your new magazine, and it's wonderful. The best story in the magazine, or rather the one I liked best, outside of the serial, which I didn't read, is The Cave of Horror by Captain S. P. Meeks. Next comes Ray Cummings' story of the fourth dimension, and Phantoms of Reality. Other good ones are Tanks, Invisible Death, and Compensation. I did not like the stolen mind. It seemed to me to be a mixture of superstition and magic, a fairy tale. I'm glad you're publishing this magazine, and I think it is worth double its present price. You have my good wishes to the magazine for a long and astounding career. My way of reading a serial is to save copies and to read the story at one time. I do not like to wait a month for a story to end or continue. Your next issue seems to sound quite interesting. The Spawn of the Stars, a very interesting and I'm sure a fit name for the story. Creatures of the Light is a very vague name. You don't know what to expect. The others will prove to be as interesting as any that I've named. I prefer interplanetary stories the most, as any amount of science can be injected in them. Nathan Greenfield, 318 East 78th Street, New York, New York prefers long stories dear editor i got your first issue of astonishing stories and although i like the stories i do not like the way you have it bound this is supposed to be criticism so don't take it to heart the pages are uneven and hard to turn but the stories in the first copy were good and you'll have a swell magazine if you have stories by harl vincent and ray cummings the aforesaid men are two of the best in the science fiction field another thing don't have any short stories if you have about three or four long stories i'd like it better i hope your magazine enjoys much success linus hogan miller 502 north washington street farmington missouri another who likes interplanetary stories dear editor i have read the first issue of astounding stories with much pleasure and if the first issue is any indication of what is to follow I will continue to be a reader you inquire as to the kind of stories that your readers think should be published I think you'll find the most popular brand to be interplanetary stories and stories along the line of the beetle horde Best wishes for success in your new endeavor F. C. Cowherd room 333 L. and N. Railroad Louisville, Kentucky attention joiners dear editor I have just finished one of the stories in your magazine and could not resist the temptation to write and tell you how much I enjoyed it the stories are great and are just the thing to give one rest and recreation at the same time they fire imagination and are not trashy love stories the main purpose of the letter is to revive an old idea and see if I can put it through I propose to organize a correspondent society for readers interested in science we would use astounding stories as our official medium each member would receive a list of members names and addresses a quantity of official stationery for intercorrespondence and a certificate of membership suitable for framing the object would be the discussion of scientific topics and the latest advances i would suggest an annual fee of 250 to cover the cost of printing stationery certificates application forms copy of the Constitution lists of members and official pins all those interested in the formation of such a society are earnestly requested to write me giving suggestions as to a suitable name etc they will receive full information and a sample of the certificate of membership and an application form I trust you will publish this letter at your earliest convenience M R Berkovich b period s c period forty six forty three st urbane street montreal canada sound criticism 
Dear Editor, you ask for readers to write you regarding types of stories desired. Well, I am an electrical engineer, and of course like my yarns to have a touch of science in them. Also, I like my authors to make an original contribution to whatever theory of science they develop fictionally. This Ray Cummings doesn't do it in his very interesting story, Phantoms of Reality. His beginning is palpably borrowed from Francis Flagg's story, The Blue Dimension, which appeared in a science fiction magazine in 1927. Flagg developed a theory of vibrations, reverberations, etc., and contributed something new to speculative science. Cummings merely seizes this point and dives into a series of improbable adventures. Now, I am not quarreling with their improbability. I like my stories improbable, but I am asking for something more original than the old rehash of kings and queens, intrigues and returning princes, etc., Again, Cumming seems to lack enough scientific acumen to make his other world different than this. Even a superficial thinker will readily see that the terrain of the other world would not faithfully follow our own in its salient features. However, forgive me for knocking, the story wasn't so bad, and Cummings doubtless can do better than this, or has. The Beetle Horde, so far, is a gem, and holds the interest. Furthermore, its science is splendid. I'm looking forward to its conclusion. The Cave of Horror is a damn good yarn. Well written, interest sustained, but I didn't care for the stolen mind. The truth is that particular story didn't hang together very well. It left one up in the air, as it were, and far from satisfied me. Too, the science involved, to say the least of it, was not very sound or plausibly put. In reading the story, I felt that the author was one who should be encouraged to write more. Nothing wrong with his imagination or ability to fling words, but that he should be gently coerced into writing with better continuity and intelligence. Compensation didn't click. Too loose. Not compact enough. Splendid idea, ruined by hasty writing. Another author needing a gentle hint. But Tanks was another surefire hit with me held me to the last word. The story sounded real. So for the stories in your first issue, you see, on the whole, I liked all of them. Still, I also like variety. Can't you give us some of the Francis Flagg type of fiction? H. Hyatt Verrill is another of my favorites. Also, Dr. Keller and Clara Harris. I have read mighty good tales by those authors. I believe you could do worse than to run an occasional H. G. Wells story. And if you gave us the first men in the moon serially, I for one would be delighted. I have tried in vain to get that story, and never have. Well, I guess I have said enough. Best wishes for the new year. May Astounding Stories grow and prosper. And its editor. C. Harry Jager, 2900 Jeden Road, Oakland, California. Likes Interplanetary Stories Dear Editor, Having read the first issue of Astounding Stories, I am about to pronounce a sentence on it. It is guilty of being astounding to the nth degree. I enjoyed all the stories immensely, and will be anxiously awaiting the next issue. Now as for some suggestions which I think would improve the magazine. 1. Try to have an interplanetary story in each issue. 2. Publish a number of interesting letters concerning astounding stories in each issue. 3. Have several illustrations in long stories. I think this would improve the magazine, although it is perfect just the way it is. Hoping Astounding Stories has a long and successful life. Forrest Ackerman, 530 Staples Avenue, San Francisco, California. Watch the coming issues, Miss Miller. Dear Editor, saw your new magazine at the newsstand and bought it at once. I like the following stories in this issue. The Beetle Horde, Phantoms of Reality, and The Stolen Mind. I did not care much for the others, and least of all, for Tanks. I believe that readers like myself who are interested in scientific fantasies prefer stories of interplanetary travels and fourth-dimensional stories and variations of these themes, such as various spaceships, 
and vibration machines for visiting other planets and traveling backwards and forwards in time stories of lost continents and of strange races of people living in unknown places on our own earth are interesting also a magazine of this kind has unlimited possibilities for stories of the aforementioned types and i believe that readers who buy magazines of these subjects expect to find therein really astounding stories best wishes for the success of your magazine ruth miller st regis hotel cleveland ohio the science ears dear editor this is to inform you that we have formed a club which we named the science ears the object of this club is to bring together members who are interested in science in general and also to talk the stories of your magazine over we have no means of reaching those who are interested except through your magazine we hope you will grant us space to print this letter in your magazine we would appreciate it if every reader of your magazine living in new york city or nearby towns would drop us a card with his name and address we then would be able to send him information of our club we hope you will print this letter as we are all readers of your magazine lewis wexler 1933 woodbine street brooklyn new york we examine all science very carefully dear editor in the first edition of your periodical you invite criticism from its readers i am extremely pleased to note that ray cummings is among its contributors his short crisp sentences and word pictures are most interesting as to the type of stories i would not be particular but there is one thing which must be observed since this magazine is about science every story must be examined to discover any false statements by the author concerning present-day science i think that discoveries and inventions to be made in the future by the author of course cannot be censored james brodent new york new york young mr wright writes in dear editor i am accepting your offer to write and tell you what kind of stories i like so i did i prefer stories of the fourth dimension i hope to find plenty of these fascinating stories in your coming issues billy wright age eleven shepherd place nashville tennessee likes his science fiction dear editor allow me to congratulate you on your fine magazine it being one of the seven more or less magazines in print that are the best on the market i'm glad to say that i can't throw you any brickbats only bouquets and thought i would tell you the kind of stories i would like to see in our magazine if i may take the liberty of calling it that i like stories of the type a merritt and edgar rice burroughs write particularly a merritt and if you could reprint through the dragon glass by a merritt i wish you would and give it a cover illustration as i have everything by him except that one please give it a cover illustration as well as any by merritt and burroughs you ever print you certainly have a good title and in my opinion the magazine need not be changed one iota except perhaps you might have the background a different color every month that is the background of the cover using every color in the solar spectrum which might make it sell better and at any rate would make a nice looking magazine in my opinion everything in science fiction that comes out i have to get and pretty soon i will have so much that i will probably have to pay storage space for it i have a pretty good amount now four stacks two feet high each but i can't resist it and will keep on buying as long as there's anything in that line to buy and as long as i can put this in the proverbial waste basket if you don't want to print it as that is probably its ultimate destination anyway as my ideas are not worth much or less than that but i do wish you would read it through and act on my suggestions soon thanks from an ardent devourer of science fiction who reads everything in that line he can get his hands on your and our magazine being one of the best in that line worth k bryant 406 north third street yakima washington a great magazine dear editor i have just come across a copy of your new magazine astounding stories and to say that it is a great magazine is putting it mild i enjoy stories of the distant future 
the first installment of the beetle horde by victor rousseau was great i hope to hear more of this author in coming issues i would like to see stories by such authors as edgar rice burroughs harl vincent otis adelbert klein garrett smith also ray cummings i wish astounding stories a long life wilbert moyer 533 north 7th street allentown pennsylvania mr anderson's favorites dear editor just a word referring to your what kind of stories do you like in astounding stories i like stories with some facts based on true science of today but let the author's imagination wander a little because anything might be possible tomorrow i do not like love stories or much humor in this type of stories stories of other worlds or of the fourth dimension always interest me because there is no limit to the imagination there why not have a discussion column and print some of the letters it would encourage more to write and give you their opinion and whether good or bad should help you please the majority some will maybe say the cover is too vivid but that was what attracted my eye when i picked it out from among many others most of your stories in the first edition were good i liked the beetle horde and phantoms of reality best also noticed the spawn of the stars next issue which sounds okay hoping you all success in this type of stories c e anderson 3504 colfax avenue minneapolis minnesota a young readers favorites dear editor i am writing you per your request in your first issue of astounding stories they are most entertaining i have read three of the stories and they are excellent you ask the readers to tell you the kind of stories we like best i like stories that concern the future of aviation i like interplanetary stories also the stories about the fourth dimension i like cummings Rousseau's, Leinster's, Meek's, Vincent's, and Starzl's writing, and your magazine is sure worth twenty cents. You can put more science in your stories. Please hold H. Wesso, your artist. He can really draw. I have seen his drawings in other magazines, and you may console yourself with the thought that you have one continuous reader. I feel that your magazine is going to be a success. I am also expressing the thoughts of other readers. I'm only 15 years old, but I like to read good science stories nevertheless. I hope to see you in next month's magazine, Ward Elmore, 2912 Avenue J, Fort Madison, Iowa. A Contented Reader Dear Editor, Congratulations on your new publication, Astounding Stories. I certainly enjoyed reading the January issue. I believe that this magazine is the answer to the prayer of those readers who are desirous of something different something unique Another feature is that you're charging only 20 cents a copy for a magazine that is really worth several times that amount You may count on me as a steady buyer of the astounding stories as long as future issues are up to the standard of the January issue Let me urge you that you give us the magazine on time every month I do not want to postpone my enjoyment of reading the unique magazine on the first Thursday of each month Keep up the good work and remember me as a contented reader of your publication T.J. Creef jr. Post Office Box 734 Phoenix, Arizona a Lollapalooza Dear editor well, I've got to say something and I might as well get it over with your new magazine astounding stories is a Lollapalooza I'm sorry I didn't get the first edition of the new magazine, but I suppose you have some in stock and I'm sending in my 20 cents in stamps to get one I might as well tell you how I found out about this new wonder One dreary dreary night. I walked into my news dealer's store to get a paper while there I happened to glance upon the bookstand I saw the word astounding and my curiosity aroused I walked over to the stand and pulled the magazine out Imagine my surprise and delight when I found out what it was well I bought the book then and there without even taking a look inside when I got home I opened the book and the first story that caught my eye was old Crompton's secret by Harl Vincent 
I knew the story was good before I read it, because I've read quite a few of Mr. Vincent's novels, and they were all excellent. The best stories I like are interplanetary stories. Why not have a reader's talks in Astounding Stories, where each reader gives his point of view on the stories in the magazine? I know everyone would enjoy that, as it gives the readers a chance to comment on stories and also see what the other reader thinks about any story in particular. I wish you success in your new enterprise, and hope my first edition of Astounding Stories arrives soon. Joseph Kankowski, 35 Columbia Street, West Orange, New Jersey. The Reader's Corner All readers are extended a sincere and cordial invitation to come over in the Reader's Corner and join in our monthly discussion of stories, authors, scientific principles, and possibilities. Everything that's of common interest in connection with our astounding stories Although from time to time the editor may make a comment or so this is a department Primarily for readers and we want you to make full use of it likes dislikes criticisms explanations roses brickbats suggestions Everything's welcome here. So come over in the readers corner and discuss it with all of us. The Editor End of the Reader's Corner and End of Astounding Stories 05, May 1930 by Various